everyone, it's Lisa from My Dream in Soap. Welcome to my channel, and thanks for dropping by. Now, as you can see, I've got my super huge extruder gun out again. Now, I would typically leave a link in the description to this, but the company that I got them from in the UK uh, doesn't seem to make them anymore, so I don't have a link for it, I'm afraid. I'm using this extruder to make a large orange embed for my soap. So at the moment, I'm just extruding through a disc that I've made the white bit of the orange, you know, the pithy bit that goes in between all of the segments. Now, this soap dough that I'm extruding does actually look white, but there's no titanium dioxide or anything in it. This is just soap dough made from my basic recipe um, with no colorants or anything in it at all. So as you can see, my batter does come out and give a nice white soap on its own. And I achieve that by always using light colored oils in my batter. So um, I just use a actually what they call a, a light in color olive oil. And I do tend to use refined other oils like um, coconut oil, cocoa butter, shea butter, those sort of things. So I try and keep my oils as light as possible. I'm then going to swap my disc over and make some orange segments. Now this soap dough that I'm using is again just naturally coloured. I've done this with a paprika infusion. So I've swapped my normal olive oil out for paprika infused olive oil and then just use that to make my soap dough. And then I'm just going to slot my little orange segment bits in between the pith and then just make sure that they're all firmly squashed together. I will need to extrude a little bit more to make my orange a little bit longer. Then I'm just going to carry on making sure I've squashed this all nicely together so I don't end up with any gaps in my finished soap. And I'm also going to run a vegetable peeler over the embed. I'm doing this to make sure I've got a nice smooth round exterior to my orange, but also because I'm actually quite short of soap dough. I don't really have a huge amount, so I'm trying to stretch this out to get my embed finished. So I'm just shaving off a few bits, which I can then use to give me the orange peel around the outside of this embed. So next I've got some more of my plain soap dough with nothing added to it and I've just rolled it out really thinly. I tend to roll my soap dough out just between a split out bag. And this is the same bag that I've been using for, gosh, over a year now. I just keep reusing it, washing up and reusing it each time. And I'm just going to take that and wrap that around my embed to make the pith that you would get just under the skin of the orange. Now, I'm not going to spray this with anything. I'm pretty happy it's going to stick together because I've literally just rolled out this soap dough. And also, I've only just made the rest of this embed and shaved it with that peeler. So everything is quite nice and soft and fresh. If I had left this for a little while, I would perhaps spray this with perhaps a little touch of distilled water to make sure they stick together. And then just the same idea with the remains of my paprika soap dough. Now this is a bit of a mixture of paprika and some of the white in here because I'm really getting short of soap dough at this point. 
So again, I've just rolled it out nice and thinly in my cut open plastic bag and I'm going to put that around the outside of my embed to complete it. Now this soap was actually a soap that I didn't have a plan for and those of you who know me know I like to have a plan but basically I woke up I think it was on a Sunday morning and I wanted to make some soap of course and I just didn't have a plan. Now the problem that we have in the UK is I can't just get up and go oh I want to do this with some blue mica and some gold mica and I want to use this fragrance soil. I can't do that. If I've got an idea for a soap I have to match it with one of my assessments. So if I want something that requires certain colours I then have to look through my assessments and see which of those have the closest colours to what I want. They may not be perfect so then I'll have to tweak my design um, and all that sort of thing and just make sure it works exactly within my assessment. So sometimes just getting up and making a soap is actually quite a complicated process here in the UK. So for this one I knew I wanted to make a soap that I could complete in one day so I didn't want to pour an embed and then make it the next day. But I wanted to do something a little bit more than just a quick swirl in a mould. So I rummaged through my soap dough and saw my natural soap doughs that I've got and decided on my orange soap. Mind you, at this point though, I'm making this jumbo orange embed and I still haven't got a plan about what I'm going to do with it apart from use it in a soap somehow. And once I've finished my embed, I'm just going to wrap it up in a bit of previously used cling wrap just to stop it drying up before it goes in my soap. So then I had to plan the rest of my soap. So I quickly ran up onto my computer and loaded up my embed shape and a couple of moulds that I commonly use and then just mucked around. And remember, I've got restrictions. I have to use what's in my assessment. So therefore, I've got certain amounts of my Aneto infusion and paprika infusion and that sort of stuff that have to be used. So I thought about a just in the pot swirl, kind of didn't really like that in my normal loaf mold. Try it in my tall and skinny. <laughs> no, nothing's really inspiring me. So then I just thought something like um, a drop swirl would look quite nice um, to sort of think about the sort of flow of orange juice. And that's where my ideas come from. So I just mucked around with a little bit of a drop swirl design. And then as I played around with the positioning of my embed, again, it started to make more sense to me to have like the drops coming out below the orange as if the orange is being squeezed rather than having the drop swirl all around the orange. And then I remembered a soap that my good friend Whitney from Cheeky Goat Soap had done where she'd actually put her embed half in the mould and half out. And I'm going to leave a link to her video below. And that's what I decided to do, to have my orange halfway coming out. And then I would do a drop swirl with my Aneto and my plain soap batter. But then I would do mini drops using a squeeze bottle to actually look like drips of orange coming out of the orange itself. So now, as part of my orange was going to be sticking up above the soap, a bit like when you see people put real slices of orange in the top of a soap, I wanted to make the outside of it look more realistic. So I'm just going to go through and stipple the bit that's going to be sticking out because oranges have that sort of like little dotted surface, don't they? Now what I'm going to do at the end of this video is I'm just going to go through how I work with using embeds and soap dough and that sort of thing within the restrictions of UK assessments. I'm doing it at the end because there may be a lot of you who aren't in the UK or don't care about UK regulations. So obviously after you've seen the soap you can go and click off and have a cup of tea and get on with the rest of your day. But for those of you who are interested in that I'm just going to pop that little section at the end. End. Let's make the rest of our soap, shall we? So I've got my two infusions here, my Anato and my Paprika, made up 
according to my assessment. I've actually already done a video on how I do my infusions and I'll leave a link to that in the description box below if you wanted to see. And what I've done is I've then divided up the rest of my oils and the oil in my jug is my normal oil mix without any olive oil in it. My infusions are made in the olive oil so I just swap that for the normal plain olive oil that I'd be using. Now when you're using an infusion you are going to have to split your oils out into separate batches and mix the lye in separately. You can't really do what you would normally do with micas when you make up one big batch of emulsified soap and then colour them afterwards. Okay, so we split out the mini batches first of all. Now that first jug that I mixed up was my Anatto, so that will give us a nice yellowy colour. I'm now mixing up the rest of my Paprika, so that will give me my orange. And then on to the plain colour. Now, I've actually chosen to use extra virgin olive oil here. Can you see that's really quite a green oil? And I've deliberately chosen that because I want the base of this soap to be sort of the creamy colour that that virgin oil gives you rather than the stark white. So I'm taking advantage of the natural colour of that extra virgin olive oil to give me an extra colour in my soap. And because this is a part of my soap that's having none of the infusions in, I'm just adding back the olive oil that was missed out when I first made up these little batches. So that's our oils all nicely prepared. I'm using tenfold orange essential oil in this soap. I always like to use a folded essential oil when you're dealing with citrus because citrus can fade terribly and disappear in your soap. Again, I have previously gone over what a folded essential oil is in another video. So if you're interested in finding out more about that, I'll put a link in the description below. So now it's just a case of mixing up our soap. So I know exactly how many oils I've got in each of these portions. I've got my entire amount of lye already prepared and I'm just going to pour out the correct amount of lye for each of these bits of oil. Now whenever I'm splitting out my lye, I always weigh every single part of it. So as you'll see, I'll even weigh the very last bit that needs to go into the last bit of oil. I do this as an extra check that I've done everything correctly. If you just weigh the first two bits and then just dump the rest of your lye into the remaining bit of oil, you lose that little check. So you could have made some sort of silly little measurement mistake somewhere and you won't know until you end up with a problem in your soap later on. So I've given the oil and lye a good old stir round and now I'm just going to blend them up to a light trace, just past emulsion really. And then for this last portion, which is quite small, I'm actually going to swap from my normal blender to my small blender. Now, I quite often get asked about this little blender. It's so much better than those battery operated ones that you can get, which seem to whimper to a pathetic death as soon as you try and mix anything more than water with them. This is a Greek frappe mixer. 
they're really easy to find on Amazon and places like that. So I would recommend that, you know, if you do make small batches of soap or want to mix micas, a Greek frappe mixer is a good thing for you to get. They plug in and they're brilliant. And then we'll just weigh out and add our essential oil. Now this tenfold orange always looks really dark and it does initially turn your batter reasonably dark, but it doesn't discolour your final soap at all. I've literally put it in plain soap batter and the soap batter comes out just as white as if I'd not added any essential oil at all. So it's perfectly fine. So we'll just get all that essential oil mixed in nicely and then I just prefer to let mine wait and come to the trace that I want rather than going back in with my stick blender. Okay, so let's pour. So I'm starting off with that drop swirl, first of all. So I'm going to put the bulk of my plain base, remember the one that's just tinted with that extra virgin olive oil, in first. And then just do a drop swirl with my annatto, and that will give me a yellowish drop swirl going through. And then I'm going to finish the pour off by adding my paprika mixture into a squeeze bottle and using that to do mini drops throughout the top area of the soap.
Okay, so now our pour's done, we just need to put in that embed that we made. And I've made sure that the soap in the mould has set up a good deal so it's going to support the weight of this embed. So I'm just making sure I've got all the speckly bits on the top and then I'm just going to gently rest it on the top and I do want to push it in a little way because I want about half of that orange to be sunk into the soap. And then I'll just tidy up around the embed and make sure I've got no soap on top of the embed and give the mould a nice wipe down. And then I'll see pop it as normal. So into an oven preheated to 170 degrees F, at 70 degrees C. Turn the oven off as the soap goes in and leave it in there overnight. So here's our soap the next day, so let's give it a cut and see what we've got. And here's our first bar and those drop swirls and everything I think have come out really nicely and you can really see the difference in the different infusions in the oil. And another thing that I think is really quite dramatic when we get another bar out is to see that difference between the soap dough that was just made with that light coloured olive oil so that's almost pure white isn't it and then if you look at the bottom of the bars that sort of creamy yellow colour that had no colouring in at all either that was just made with the extra virgin olive oil so it's often I think one of the things that we quite often see people asking in forums where they wonder about how they can get a white batter and they're worried about using titanium dioxide or how much to use often the biggest contributing factor is what oils are you putting in your soap if you're using extra virgin then you're kind of going to really struggle to ever get a decently white batter and here are some final pictures of the soap. Now if you remember I'm going to do a little bit at the end about how I work with soap dough and embeds under our UK regulations. So if you want to stay around for that then that's great. If not then thanks ever so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you again soon. Happy soaping! Okay, so if you're still here, then hopefully you're interested in working with soap dough and things under the UK regulations, or maybe you're just interested in finding about of it, even if you don't live in the UK. Now, as we know, the UK and the EU has very tight restrictions on cosmetic products, and we have to get all of our soap recipes assessed, and without that, it's illegal to sell your soap. Now once that assessment is made and you have your report, you can't change anything in that assessment at all. So the exact oils, if you're using micas, the exact micas, the exact fragrance or essential oil has to stay exactly the same, including the exact quantities. So you can't decide, oh, I don't want blue in this one or I want a bit more red. Everything has to stay exactly the same. Now, clearly, the easiest thing to do is to then decide on a soap that you want to make and then just churn the same soap out over and over and over again. And there's nothing wrong with that. If that's what you want to do, then great, go for it. But if you're someone like me, you would find that incredibly boring to do. I'm not in the soaping game, as it were, to mass produce the same soap time and time again. I do it because I love the creativity of making soap and so therefore I want to make different soaps. And you can do that, it's just harder work, it's more record keeping, it's more maths and calculation but if you put in the effort you can do it. So for example the soap that we've just been looking at in this video is done with an identical assessment to this soap 
which is a to comb or not to comb design and this soap which is again the to comb and not to comb but with an extra swirl put through it. All identical assessments. OK then, so let's go. Now you're going to get maths I'm afraid and there's just no way round it if you want to do different things with your assessments. So all I've got here is that first of all I weigh out the soap dough that I'm going to be using. Now I don't know how much I'm going to be using so I weigh out the soap dough that I've got. So for mine I had 285 grams of plain soap dough and 421 grams of soap dough made with my Propica infusion. Once I've made whatever it is I'm making I then weigh what I've got left and that tells me how much of my soap dough I used. And you can see here I used all of my plain and pretty well all of my Paprika soap dough. So if we add up the total amount of this soap dough that I've used, that comes to 671 grams. Now you obviously need to know how you've made this soap dough. So obviously I've used my standard recipe. So I've got 671 grams in total of soap. In my recipe, I have 72% of oils. So I've got 483 grams of oil in this soap dough. Also, it's important to know exactly how you've made that soap dough. So how much mica did you put in it and all that sort of stuff. You have to keep track of that. So for me, with my paprika infusion, I know that I've used 386 grams of paprika soap dough. I know in that there's 72% of oil and I know I swap out all of my olive oil, which is 38% of my oils, with my paprika infusion. So if we work out that lovely little sum, I can see that I've used 105 grams of paprika infusion in this soap. Now this would work exactly the same way no matter how you're making up your soap dough or how you're making up your embed. You weigh what it is that you've used and you say, for example, if you've used mica, you might have used four grams of mica per 500 grams of oil or something or what, whatever that you do for your assessment. You work it out in exactly the same way. So you know in my embed there is this much mica or in my soap dough that I've used there is this much mica. If you fragranced it you'd then also do the same for the fragrance oil. So now we need to work out how much of that additive or whatever it is you're checking for you're allowed to use in this soap. Or in fact, you have to use, don't you? Because you can't vary the amount up to a certain amount. So in my recipe, I know that to fill up the soap mould to where I wanted it to be, I wanted 1,200 grams of oil. And also, remember the embed that I've got is part of my soap, so you need to add those two together. So my total oils that I've got for my entire soap is 1,683 grams. And remember here, the amounts we're talking about, the 1,200 and the 483, are oil amounts, they're not total soap amounts. So if I now check my assessments and see the amounts that I need to use in this soap. My assessment is based on a thousand grams of oil and obviously with your assessments once you've got them you can increase or decrease them can't you as long as the percentages of everything stays the same. So for mine I have a natto infusion of a hundred grams in that amount and my paprika infusion is 140 grams in that amount. But remember, we're not using a thousand grams of oil, are we? We've calculated that we're using 1,683 grams. So for my soap that I'm making now, I need to times everything by 1.683. So when we work that out, that tells me that I need to use 168 grams of my Anato infusion. 
and 235 grams of my paprika. And again, if you were looking at an embed you'd made or some soap dough with mica, you would just literally look at your assessment, look at the amount you need to use, take off the amount that you have used, and that will give you the amount that's left. So we know at the moment I haven't used any annatto at all in my embed. So of my 168 grams, I've used nothing. So I need to use 168 grams of that infusion. But with my paprika, we know that's what I made my soap dough out of. So in total, I need to use 235 grams. If you remember from earlier on, we worked out I've already used 105. So I now have to use 130 grams more of my paprika infusion. And at that point, if you were working this out for maybe a fragrance oil that you'd used or a mica or something, you can now just say, right, these are the amounts I've got to use in the rest of my recipe. It's slightly more complicated with an infusion because I need to infuse these back into my oils. So for remember the soap I poured where I did my drop swirl, I now can go through and work out how I need to make the soap batter for that drop swirl up. So I've just dropped in a little table for my annatto, paprika and my plain bits of batter and the amounts of infusion that I need to use. So I know I've still got to use 168 of annatto and 130 of paprika. So let's have a look. Of that 168 of annatto, I know that replaces my olive oil, which is 38% of my oils. So if I do the 168... Divide it by 38 and times it by 100, that tells me then that my total oils for the annatto proportion are 442 grams. Doing the same for our paprika, I need to use 130 grams of infusion. So again, that's my olive oil. So divide that by 38 and then times that by 100. And I know for this portion, I'm going to use 342 grams of total oil. Now, once we've done that, we just know the rest of that oil that I'm going to use is going to be just my plain oil with no infusions in at all. So literally, I'll just balance that off. And that leaves me with 416 grams of oil, which will just be uncolored so just my plain batter and remember back in the video we did that with the extra virgin olive oil and again we know of that 416 grams of oil 38 percent of it will be olive oil so i'll need to use 158 grams of that extra virgin oil so we can just do a little check there i've added up all my infusions so they come to 456 I've added up all my oils, they come to 1,200. So let's just do a little check. So if we take our total oils, 1,200, and we times that by 38%, that should then come back to, and it does, 456. So by just doing that little check, I know that I've got the proportions of everything correct. And then from there, you can go up and mix up your oils and work out your lye and everything as normal, just as you would do your normal soap. Now, as I've already said, working it out for just micas and fragrance oils is a little bit more straightforward. It's a little bit more confusing when you've got infusions, but essentially that's what you're going to need to go through if you want to muck around with your recipe and use embeds and things. Let's have a look at how that affects our recording. So for what you record on the portal, it will have no impact because you are sticking exactly to your assessment and therefore it won't, you won't need to record anything differently. However, in your PIF file, your product information files and your batch logs, you do need to keep records. Every time you make soap dough, your soap dough should be recorded as a separate batch and you should list all the batch information for it just as you would with making any normal soap and that should be recorded. 
Then when you use your main soap, again, that will create another batch and you will use your soap dough as an ingredient in that main batch. So therefore you will have to list, I have a separate log of all my soap doughs and so therefore for a batch where I'll use some soap dough, I will have the main batch and the oils and the batch references and everything of everything I've used in that main batch. And then I list as an ingredient the soap dough. So mine might be soap dough number 47. So my 47th batch of soap dough. And I'll have a batch log with all the records for all the information about that soap dough as well. OK, I hope you found that helpful. And as you can see, it is possible to use soap dough or to your designs, um, use embeds, but you've got to be meticulous about your recording and you've got to be happy about mucking around with the figures so you still end up with the completely correct percentages that are in your assessments. If you're not capable of doing that or you're not happy doing that, then you're just going to have to stick with more straightforward soaps because obviously if you use different amounts than are in your assessments, it then invalidates those assessments and your soaps would be illegal to sell. Right, I'm getting out of here because if you're still here, you've been here for ages. Um, so thanks very much, everybody. As I said, I hope you found this video useful and happy soaping. See you again soon.